you to know at the moment I'm a very happy camper because I've been away for four weeks. A little long, I might add. But as part of the trip, we went to Cambodia and we went on a tuk-tuk tour, which is like a little motorcycle with, with something behind it. And you sit in this and drive along. And we went into rural uh, Cambodia where I was cupped. Watch this. And here you can see this is uh, actually a photograph of my son after the cups were taken off. And there's also a photograph of me being cupped because I had a little bit of a headache. And basically they heat the cups up. Actually for the head, they put a little um, uh, uh, a candle on my head and then put the cup over it and it sticks there and afterwards you have a hickey. Well, I had, a, I had a little bit of a headache, but it didn't help me at all because I don't think there was really anything wrong with us. But there's compelling evidence that this crazy approach works. Yes, indeed. indeed. And it uh, is of value in helping back pain, treating psychiatric illnesses like depression. You can go in there and be cupped. And uh, 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 if you believe it's going to work, I think it's going to work. How important, uh, Ron, is this idea of the mind-body interaction? Because, you know, a lot of people say that uh, if you are given a treatment and you're convinced that it's going to fail, it won't work. But if you have a positive attitude, if you have hope, and if you have faith in the person who's doing it, that it's far more likely uh, to work. So, so how does psychological issues fit into integrative medicine? Uh, they are hand in glove. And I agree. Time magazine a few years ago did a study showing that, you know, antidepressants, and I, I, they use Prozac as their trial versus um, a placebo as a coin flip, but which made people better. The, what made people better was the anticipation of getting better. And so there is definitely a strong mind-body connection. And we certainly use that to our advantage in uh, alternative therapy or integrative therapy. So, so one of the things that I find with many of my patients is they're pretty down. They've got chronic pain. They believe they're invalids. They sit at home. And all they focus on is their pain. And the less you do, uh, and the more you focus on your problem, the worse the problem gets. And these individuals are very stressed. So do you have a component where you can reduce stress levels or alternatively provide uh, some psychological support? Because it's all about coping skills. We do. And, and I use four different uh, treatment goals in each session I, I see. We talk to people about diet because I believe if you eat bad food you can't expect a good health outcome. Exercise and movement is crucial. Um, stress reduction to me gets as much attention in a patient visit as anything else because we know if we reduce their stress, we reduce their cortisol level, we make beneficial changes in their biochemistry which makes them feel better. And then I also stress gratitude and things that, and loving others and being beneficial and, and volunteering and things because these kinds of things help our biochemistry. They help our physiology. They help us feel better. And I've seen it time and time again where if you help people with their stress and give them concrete things to do to help their stress and to help them be a little bit more grateful, the physiology and the com physical complaints come in line. Well, I was, you know, often when we talk about stress reduction, people say you've got to relax. But stress sure. reduction is as, requires as much effort as eating right and uh, dieting. So how do you tell a person what they need to do in order to reduce stress? What about meditation, for example? Meditation is a great example. We just had a, a four or five week series of a, uh, a meditation provider come and talk to our, our patient group. It was very well attended and we went through four different types of uh, meditation r routines. Uh, but 
uh, we will often just start with just deep breathing. The simple fact that of us taking a deep breath, holding it and letting it out slowly can affect our cortisol level and, uh, and really do things to immediately decrease your blood pressure and decrease your sense of being stressed. Well, you know, stress reduction saved my life, Ron, because about uh, 15 or 16 years ago now, maybe 20, I had a heart attack. And at the same time, uh, I competed for a grant that eventually turned out to be $100 million from the Donald W. Reynolds Foundation. And I remember that the stress would cause chest tightness. And one day I saw a sign on top of a window which says, learn how to cope with cancer. And I thought, if this person can teach people to cope with cancer, maybe she can teach me how to cope with the stresses of living. And she saved my life. And I do what's called a mindfulness training every day. I sit back, take deep breaths, and then relax all my muscles, and then eventually think of safe places. And afterwards, I really and truly believe it's lowered my blood pressure and a lot of other things, and there's a lot of evidence that it's of value. I agree. I agree. So, so we've now yeah. talked about getting stuck with needles, getting hickeys from, uh, from cupping, the importance of stress reduction, the importance of uh, exercise, uh, the importance of eating right and losing weight, and we've also talked about uh, the importance of hope, love, and faith, which I think are critically important. And that brings us, I think, to the area that we might also want to discuss a little bit, and that is the use of pills. And we use traditional medicine, but there are stores that are packed with pills that you can buy that are supposed to help everything. So what do you do about alternative medications? Or if they, they're not medication, whatever you want to call them, where do they fit? Supplements and vitamins. And, and I think they have a legitimate purpose in certain circumstances. But you have to realize that those are bioactive compounds and you don't need to take them willy-nilly. You need to know what you're taking, what are the possible interactions with prescription medicines that you're taking, and what are the odds that this are, are going to help your particular problem. And I have patients who come in and they may have a, a sack full of supplements. And since I'm known as being kind of the local holistic doctor, they think I'll be proud of them. But actually, you have to take this seriously. And, and quite often, I will trim back the number of supplements that we have. You have to learn about this like you do any other type of pharmacology and learn to use these things appropriately. So just going out to uh, GNC or Whole Foods and stacking up on a lot of drugs that are going to help this and that may do you more harm than good. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like throwing a dart at a dartboard. Yeah, there's some very interesting research studies uh, ones that I'm most interested in are the antioxidants like vitamin C, vitamin E, mm -hmm. and a vitamin A. Uh, and it all began with Linus Pauling who said if you take a little, it's probably going to help. But if you take a, a massive amount, it's probably going to help more. And, and actually, when you take massive amounts of vitamin C and vitamin E, it might reduce may shorten your life expectancy, increase the risk of cancer, and raise your blood pressure. So why do it? I think we're going to have to take another break, and we're going to talk some more about how you integrate everything to be a better, healthier, happier, and more fulfilled patient.